Okay, welcome to the programming segment of the Digifier 10. Uh, your Digifier 10 has been calibrated at the factory for the sensor that is included with it. Uh, we include only one sensor uh, and it is calibrated to output number one only. You cannot use it for output two. You will note that the sensor is marked number one. If you plan to purchase a second sensor for use in output two, you will have to calibrate that sensor for that output. The instructions on how to do that are included with the manual when you buy this controller. Uh, it is important to note that you must program in a variable power setting for outputs one and two if you plan to use outputs one and or two in the temperature sensing mode. Uh, there are two reasons for this. The controller will default to the variable power settings if there is a sensor failure. And with no power settings, uh, variable power settings programmed for outputs one or two, the output is actually off. So uh, if you do plan to use it in temperature sensing, remember to do that. Also, if you do have a sensor failure, the controller defaults to your variable power setting, thereby uh, keeping your observing session alive because uh, it will prevent, continue to prevent the formation of dew. Uh, as with the Digifier 7, the variable power settings are programmed in 10% increments, and that's indicated on the scale here on the left, from uh, zero, well, 10 to 100%, but you can actually program from 0 to 100%. And the scale on the right is for the uh, temperature uh, variance above ambient, and that's indicated in degrees Celsius, uh, 1 to 10. So, for example, assume you've programmed uh, in a temperature variance of 5 degrees. The controller will attempt to keep your optic or device 5 degrees above the actual ambient air temperature. Typically, we recommend a temperature variance above ambient air temperature between 3 and 7 degrees, but that depends on the size of your optic and the device you are heating. Another consideration when programming the temperature is how cold the temperatures are for your particular session or in your area where you observe from. The colder it is, the greater the variance you will need to program into the controller. Okay, so now we'll go into the actual programming uh, of this controller. You don't need to have anything plugged into it to do this, so I'll just move the sensor aside. Uh, the controller is turned on. And uh, to enter into programming mode, you press the two keys at the bottom together simultaneously. You will see that the default setting of 50% uh, illuminates on the center bar, and output 1 is illuminated, and outputs 2, 3, and 4 are not. So we are now into output 1 uh, and programming the uh, variable power setting. Uh, we'll set power uh, to 70% for output number 1. Press the enter key, it now cycles to number two. And we will set this one to, let's assume, 80%. Enter. Output three, I'm going to say, uh, I don't need that to be operational, I'll turn it off. Enter. Uh, output four, let's do it at 40%. Enter. Now, it's going to program the temperature variance into output one. I'm assuming I've got an 8-inch Schmidt Cassegrain. Uh, it's a cool summer evening. I'm going to want it to be about 5 degrees above ambient. Enter. I'm not going to program a temperature into output 2 because I've only got one sensor. So I will simply arrow out. That exits the programming mode. And you'll now see output 1 is flashing. I'll explain why in a moment. Output 2 is on, 3 is off. According to my programming of the duty cycle for that output, it's off, and output 4 is on. The reason output 1 is flashing is I don't have my sensor connected. Uh, the controller sees this as a fault, so uh, once I plug this in, that will stop. So you can now see that that LED on output 1 is solid and uh, is now controlling that or sensing the temperature variance 
uh, between ambient and my surface and will endeavor to keep that surface uh, at the specified degrees above ambient, which in this case uh, I believe was four degrees. If at any time this LED flashes, when you do have a sensor connected, it indicates a faulty sensor and you will need to contact us uh, about that. Uh, that is it. Uh, that explains everything on how to use this controller. Uh, good luck and thank you very much.